Turn to Luke chapter 9, please. Luke chapter 9. Uh, the, the topic I'm going to preach on uh, probably will last two or three weeks. It's going to be, I need to take a lot of time in it. Um, if I read every verse and I had to cut out, believe it or not, I had to cut out many, many verses just to get to this number. But if I read every verse that I have written in these notes, I'd read, hold your breath, okay, 205 verses. All right. So the, the Bible has a lot to say about this topic. As a matter of fact, this topic is very easy to prove. It's very easy to prove. Um, but we need to discuss it. We need to look at it because there are a lot of falsehoods, uh, even lies, or especially errors uh, that are being preached and taught and heard in the news, especially right now, about this topic. And for some of you, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Anytime you hear something that's new to you, a red flag should go up. You know, if you hear something, if, you're, if you've been around church, you've been in your Bible a lot, and something's brand new to you, you shouldn't just accept it. You should do what the Berean Christians did in Acts 17.11. It says, these were more noble than they, those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, but then they didn't stop with that. It says, and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So as I preach this, it's going to be vastly different from what you're hearing in the news it's going to be vastly different than the most popular preachers in our land. It's going to be vastly different than maybe how you were raised. But what I'm going to ask you to do is to put it to the test. I'm not asking you to accept it because I'm saying it. I'm asking you to go to the Bible and see if these things are so. And everything I'm going to say, oh, I, might give a, I might give a half percent of my opinion at the beginning about something, but everything else I'm going to say comes straight from the Bible. Uh, so, again, I, I, there's no way I'm going to get through 205 verses this morning. No way. And everybody said, amen. <laughs> you are so carnal. I mean, my word. Come on. You know? <laughs> no, I'm with you. I'll, I'll be going out the door too, okay? So, uh, Luke chapter 9, the, the title of the message is this. And again, I want you to hear it carefully. I want you to hear out what I have to say. See if these things are so. The title of the message is this, Some Israelis are the people of God. Um, I, I started out to say modern day Israel is not the people of God. But as I thought through that title, it wasn't exactly accurate. It's very close, but it's not exactly accurate. This is exactly accurate. Some Israelis are the people of God. How many of you are aware there's a war going on in modern-day Israel? I, I, probably most people here are aware of that. Some horrific things happened this week. I, I, don't, care which, what, I don't care what your belief system is or where, where you uh, lie on this matter of modern-day nation of Israel. We, I think we should be able to all agree terrible, horrific things have happened this week. Um, if I, I can just think, if somebody entered my nation, now let me say this, the church has a very different job from the government, very different job. The government's job, Romans 13 tells us the main job the government has. The Bible says in Romans 13 that the, the powers that be, they bear the sword to punish evildoers. That's one of their main jobs. So if the events of what happened in Israel happened here, I would expect our government to rally troops to stop terrorists. I would expect that. Um, Hamas, the, the, the word Hamas itself, I actually, I got to meet one of the sons. This has been about 13, 14 years ago. Some of you may be aware of this man. I got to meet one of the founders of Hamas, his son. How many of you heard of Masab Hassan Youssef? You may know who I'm talking about. His dad was one of the founders of Hamas. And Masab Hassan Youssef trusted Christ as his savior. And you, you may have heard me tell the story before of a, a man who was a terrorist, and he was, who was, I think he was in Europe, if I remember right, and he was, uh, someone was handing out flyers to a Bible study, and he, he got that flyer, 
And he said, I'm going to go there for ammunition. He didn't mean bullets. He meant to show how silly Christians are. And when he went to that study, uh, the person teaching was teaching from Matthew where it says, Matthew chapter 5, where it says, It had been written, Thou shalt love, or thou heard it have been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Well, when he heard that, his statement was, Where I'm from, we hate our brother. Where I'm from, we deceive our brother. This is Masab Hassan Yusef, the son of one of the founders of Hamas. And he said that those words chased him, and he eventually placed his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He actually came over to the United States, became an American citizen, and then later he fled. I mean, they're hunting for him. Um, Hamas is a terrorist organization. The, the title uh, Hamas, it's actually an, an Arabic acronym, uh, means Islamic Resistance Movement is what it means. Uh, they're very similar to Hezbollah, to Al-Qaeda, to the Taliban. Uh, they come from the Muslim Brotherhood. So uh, they, they would like to destroy America. Okay, that's true. Um, say, if, if China and Japan got in a war, who would you want to win? Well, China wants to take us down. Japan says they're our friends. So at this point, I'd want Japan to win. I'm getting, this is my half percent opinion right now. Okay. If North Korea and South Korea got in a war, I'd want South Korea to win because they're our ally. And they don't want to kill us like North Korea. At least, you know, I don't think so uh, at this point. Um, if Iran and, you know, Australia or England got in a war, I'd want Australia or England to win. Why? Because Iran wants to kill us. I, I, want, I want freedom in our nation. If Israel and Hamas get in a war, at this point, I want Israel to win. Because Israel doesn't want to kill us. Hamas does. That's, that's my opinion, and I, I think most people would share that opinion. If you have somebody's wanting to kill you, you wouldn't necessarily root for them in the war. Okay, that being said, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. God so loved the world. Which part of the world? All of it. Wait, does that include North Korea? Does that include China? Does that include Russia? Does that include Palestinians? It does. Um, the Bible says God wants all men to be saved. Does that include Iran? It does. He wants all men to be saved, to come under the knowledge of the truth. Uh, by the way, I'm going to say something shocking, and I'm going to prove this later in this message, in these next two or three messages um, I, would, I would spend more time on this tonight, but today is Teen Sunday, and I want our young men to have that opportunity. So I may spend a few minutes on this tonight, but I'll spend more time on this next week. Um, God wants all men to be saved, to come unto the knowledge of the truth. 2 Peter 3.9 says, The Lord's not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. By the way, with, this is one war. It depends on who you ask. There are varying estimates of this, but in some uh, estimates, there are 32 wars going on in the world right now. We just happen to know a lot about that one because we have a great interest in Israel because Israel has mentioned that name, though that's not the same people. We'll talk about that in a minute. But that name is mentioned over and over in the Bible. So we have an interest in that. But there are multiple wars going around, much bloodshed, much trouble going on in the world today. None of it's good. None of, none of it's wonderful. As a matter of fact, if, if you have a love for violence, something's wrong in the heart. When, when you look at uh, the Bible in Genesis, one of the reasons God sent the flood is because the earth was filled with violence. Now look, I'm not a pacifist. There is a time for war. There is. Uh, by the way, if somebody's breaking in your house, sir, there's a time for war. There's a time for war. Um, and I, you know, I could spend more time on that topic. I'm not a pacifist. Jesus Christ is the King of kings, Lord of lords. He's coming back to conquer and rule and reign with a rod of iron. Um, but things are not the way they've been presented in the news. They're not the way the vast majority of preachers have been preaching. And I'm going to prove that to you from the Bible with hundreds of verses, not just this morning though. 
Luke chapter 9, I want you to see verse 51. It says, And it came to pass when the time was come that he, Jesus, should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. So the time came. He was about to go to Jerusalem to offer his life on the old rugged cross for the sins of the world. He's about to die on the cross for every man, woman, boy, and girl. He's about to be buried and rise again. He's going to ascend back to the Father. That time has come. So he's planning to go to Jerusalem, verse 52, and sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. As I preach this over the next few weeks, you're really going to have to be engaged with your mind. Uh, this is simple, but there's a lot of detail, and there are a lot of things to undo. So I ask you to stay with me. I ask you maybe even to jot down some notes or maybe even go back and look at these truths to see if these things are so. You need to understand the dynamic between Jews and Samaritans. Way back in the history of the children of Israel, they split into two kingdoms. We've been talking about that in Sunday school. The northern kingdom became known as Israel. The southern kingdom became known as Judah. The capital of the northern kingdom was Samaria. The capital of the southern kingdom was Jerusalem. What ended up happening is Israel eventually was taken away captive by the Assyrians. The kings of Assyria sent other people back to that land. They intermarried with the people that were left. And so they were a mix of the northern kingdom of Israel and of Assyrians and all sorts of other nations, as a matter of fact. So the Jews from Judah looked at the northern kingdom as half-breeds. They looked at them, it, it, they called them dogs, actually. They, they looked at Samaritans as half-breeds. They hated them. Um, this is why when Jesus met the woman at the well, she was from Samaria, if you remember that, and she wondered why Jesus, who was a Jew, was even talking to her, because the Bible says the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. So she's wondering, why is this man even talking to me? We don't get along. You're from, you're from the southern kingdom. And by the way, that's very easy to prove. Second Kings tells us where that term, you look up the first time the word Jews appears. And what is it referring to? It's very simple. It's referring to people from the southern kingdom of Judah. It's not referring to Israel as a whole. It's very important to understand that. And that's very easy to prove. And we could take time looking at it. And by the way, all of these things I'm going to preach, I'm happy to sit down with anybody and answer questions from the Word of God. Don't give me your prophecy book. Let's open our Bibles and see if these things are so. So there's this conflict between uh, Judah and, and Israel. There's this conflict between Samaritans and Jews that goes back a lot of years. So when Jesus is getting ready to go to Jerusalem, which is the worship center for Judah, the southern kingdom, the Samaritans, the northern kingdom, that used to be Israel, uh, the, 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 the northern kingdom, they hear that Jesus is coming, verse 53, and they did not receive him. Why? Because the Jews and Samaritans don't get along. Because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Even as Elias did, we know these Samaritans, they don't love us Jews. Lord, let's just kill them all. Let's kill them. Let's kill them. Verse 55, but he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. This is not God's spirit directing your thoughts to wipe out those half-breed Samaritans. It's not God's spirit telling you to do that. Verse 56. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Heavenly Father, as I begin this study and preach your word, I pray that you'll Help us to give you our full attention. Help us to be diligent to hear these truths, to compare them to your word and see if these things are so. Lord, and help us understand the importance of this topic, I pray. Lord, give me wisdom now in the few minutes I have to say exactly what you want said the way you want it said. In Jesus' name, amen. As I said, I, I like modern-day Israel because at this point they don't want to kill us. At this point, they're an ally. But there are many falsehoods, lies, and errors that have been stated about the modern-day nation of Israel. Um, 
understand Jesus came to save men's lives, not to destroy them. Now, he is the king of kings, lord of lords. He is going to come, and, and he is going to declare war one day. Right now, there's the opportunity for the world to trust him as savior. He is the lamb of God, but one day he'll come back as the lion of Judah, and the time will be up. By the way, the time will be up no matter what physical nation you're from if you haven't placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Here are some of the falsehoods, lies, and errors that have been stated about the modern-day nation of Israel. By the way, some people don't want to examine these truths because they don't like to be called names. People will call you names if you believe what the Bible says. You're an anti-Semite. I'm going to tell you who's an anti-Semite. Somebody who lies and says that somebody who lives in modern-day Israel doesn't need a new covenant with Jesus Christ. They have their own covenant with God, John Hagee said. So why would we even witness to them? You know, they're going to be saved anyway. All Israel is going to be saved. Lies, error, heresy. And it's very provable from the Bible. You're an anti-Semite. No, somebody's an anti-Semite who won't tell them the truth to deliver them from hell and so they can have a home eternal in heaven. That's an anti-Semite. Here are some of the lies that have been told. Number one, they've never had all of their land. First of all, I want you to understand this, and I'll say more about this. The people, just, just speaking physically right now, the people who are there right now are not even the same people as who was there way back in the Old Testament. Just because the name is Israel doesn't mean they're the same people. Understand that. It's very important. The lie, they've never had all their land. Well, Joshua 21, 43 through 45 says they have had all their land but that they did not do what God told them to do and drive out the inhabitants who taught them to live wickedly and then God had to bring judgment down upon their own head. But God's word makes it clear that they did have all their land. I mean, the Bible's just very plain about that. So either you believe the Bible or you believe what some other preachers told you. Number two, here's another error. Modern day Israel is the same as the Israel of Moses and they, modern day Israel, are the chosen people of God. That's an error. Now, as I said in the title, some Israelis are the people of God. But I could have put any nation there. Some Americans are the people of God. Some Canadians are the people of God. Some Australians, you fill in the blank, fill in the nation. Some of them are the people of God. Some of them are the remnant who are the people of God. Number three, here's another error. Modern day Israel are Jews and therefore they are the chosen people of God. That's an error. See, as I said, the first time Jews is mentioned, we could look at this, 2 Kings 16, 1 through 6. It's literally talking about people from Judah, the southern kingdom. So, okay, so you say, well, okay, what makes you a Jew? What makes you the people of God? Uh, is it living in Jerusalem? So if, if Jews are from Judah originally, and they, that's where that term comes from, so if you live in Jerusalem, you're the people of God. Or if you live in Judah or what was later known as Judea, that area, that, that same region. So you're the people of God if you live there. So number one, I ask, does your address make you one of the people of God? Follow what I'm saying. If you live within certain national boundaries, does that make you the people of God? Now if you say, yes, it does. If they are Israeli citizens and they have the flag with that blue star on it and uh, that they live there and they're citizens, they're the people of God. Well then, okay, let's follow that logic. Did you know that 18% of the modern day nation of Israel is Muslim? Did you hear what I said? Did you know that 18% of the modern day nation of Israel is Muslim? It is. Wait a minute. So what you're saying is those 18%, they're the people of God because they live in Israel? I'm going to say something that's going to shock some of you, and I'll prove it. Uh, Islam is actually closer to the truth than Judaism is. I know I, I, I just lost a bunch of people. I'm absolutely telling you the truth. Did you know Islam teaches? Now, now they're, they're wrong what they're teaching. But Islam teaches that Jesus was a great prophet. Well, we know he's more than a prophet. He's a son of God. He's God in the flesh. But Judaism, go check it out. In the Talmud, they teach, this is absolute truth. They teach that Jesus was a fool, a hypocrite, that he was the fruit of 
Mary, who was a harlot, who had relationships with a Roman soldier, and that Jesus is now burning in hell in hot excrement. That's what Jews believe about Jesus. So, no, they don't. You're lying to me. They're just like us. No, they are not. They're not. The Talmud. The Talmud. Go, go read it. That, what, what is the Talmud? The Talmud's 36 volumes uh, that Jewish rabbis, Jewish rabbis put out 36 volumes of wisdom and that's, they, they say, well, they believe the Torah. They believe the five books of Moses. No, they don't. I'm going to show you that in just a minute too. Say, are you against modern day Israel? No, I, I, like I said, I want them to defeat uh, Muslim terrorists. And for the best I know, at this point, they don't want to destroy us. But because they live at that address does not make them the people of God. In fact, this is as much what Jesus said. Go to John 4. When Jesus was talking to the woman at the well who was a Samaritan. Look what he said in John 4, verse 20. She says to him, in John 4, 20, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem. Worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Hold on, somebody will stop right there. See, salvation's of the Jews. It is. Guess who salvation is? It's Jesus Christ. Jesus' name means Jehovah is salvation. Jesus physically, yes, he came from that lineage. Now keep reading, verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is. When the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto Him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. That's what Christ, that's what Christ means. It means Messiah, anointed one. It's the King. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. So does living at a certain address make you the people of God? Uh, did you know what the Bible calls modern-day Jerusalem? Revelation 11.8, you can look it up if you'd like. What does the Bible call modern-day Jerusalem? It calls it Sodom and Egypt. Sodom and Egypt. So does living at a certain address make you the people of God? No. If you say it does, then you have to say that the 18% who are Muslims are also the people of God because they're citizens of modern-day Israel. Number two, does having a certain DNA make you the people of God? What would you think if I stood up here this morning and I said, I want you to, I want you to know, I'm going to scare some of you right now, but, but you should realize you're, you're kind of holding to this yourself. Listen, listen to what I'm going to say. I want you to know I'm part of an elite people. Because I have blue eyes, and my skin is a certain color, and I live in a certain, and I have certain DNA, I have certain ancestry, I'm part of an elite people. Who, who said something like that before? Hitler. Hold on. Who says that now, too? People who say, well, I have some Jewish blood in me. Did you know how many of us in this room probably have some Jewish blood in us? If you're in this room, raise your hand. Yeah. Okay? See, we all come from the same place. Did you know Acts 17 says that we're all of one blood? Which, by the way, means that if you judge somebody because of the color of their skin, you're not right with God. Now, we look at it from a negative point, but that's true from a positive standpoint, too. If you look at a certain people because they're of a certain DNA and say they're the people of God, you're, you're way off in your thinking. See, we're, we're all of one blood. In fact, that's why the Bible tells us in Titus 3, 9, 1 Timothy 1, 4, to avoid genealogies, endless genealogies. What's the point of that? The point of that is you trace us all back, no matter what color your skin is, no matter where you live, trace us all back to Adam and Eve. We're all created in the image of God. Your DNA does not make you 
the people of God. So that's racist to think that because you have blue eyes and a certain color skin that you're an elite people. I agree. But how many people are racist saying because somebody has a certain DNA, which we all actually do have some of the same stuff, that suddenly you're the people of God? Um, John in Matthew 3, the, the, the Pharisees, they said, we're the children of Abraham physically. We're the descendants of Abraham. John said, God's able these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You're, you're not a special people of God because you have a certain DNA. Um, in Romans 9, let's look at this. I mean, this, this can't be more plain. Look at Romans 9, 1 through 8. And again, I, I know I don't have time to go through every verse here, but I'm challenging you I'm challenging you to go to the Bible and see if these things are so. Look at Romans chapter 9, verse 1. Paul says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ. What is he saying? Here's what he's saying. I, I would willingly die and go to hell if all these people would be saved. That's an amazing love. That's what Paul's saying. I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ. Notice this. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. He's talking about DNA. He's talk, talking about a lineage. Notice verse 4. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers, what is he saying? He's saying that the physical nation of Israel had every advantage. Notice. And of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came. Christ was born in Israel. He's born in uh, Bethlehem of Judea, right? So he came after the flesh according uh, to the flesh. He came through Israel. Notice. Who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Verse 6. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect. Notice this. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. What in the world does that mean? Here's what it means. Just because you're of a physical nation called Israel does not make you the Israel of God, which Paul differentiated in Galatians. Who's the Israel of God? If you've believed on Jesus Christ as your Savior, raise your hand. You're the Israel of God. So what, what, what do you mean here? What I'm saying is some Israelis are the Israel of God. They have a physical nation. They are citizens of the modern day nation of Israel. And they have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And therefore they are the Israel of God. And there are people in America, and I'm one of them, and most of us here probably are one of them, that you've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, what are Americans? What's an American? We're a mix of everything. Heinz 57, right? Okay. But we're the people of God if we've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Now notice what he says. Verse 7, Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Just because they're physical descendants of Abraham does not mean they're the children of God. Now keep reading. But in Isaac shall they see be called. It can't be more plain than this. Look at verse 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. If you've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are the child of God. You are the Israel of God. You are the elect of God. Your DNA does not make you a child of God. It doesn't make you a special favored people. Isn't that racist to say? Hello? It is. Look at John chapter 8. I'm going to take five more minutes, and we're just scratching the surface. John chapter 8, verse 10. So does, does living at a certain address make you the people of God? If you, if you pack up right now and you move to Israel, modern day Israel, and you become a citizen of Israel, are you now suddenly the people of God because you have a different ID in your wallet? No. If being a, 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 having a certain DNA makes you one of the people of God, how much do you have to have? You know, this was the question that the Nazis asked 
about who is a Jew. Well, if their mother's Jewish, then they're Jewish. Do you understand how evil this thinking is? It is. To say you're the people of God because you have a certain DNA? Look at John chapter 8, verse 10. Uh, where am I at my notes? Here we go. Uh, John 8. Where am I at? Here we go. Oh, no, verse 37 is what I'm looking for. I'm sorry. Look at verse 37. John chapter 8, verse 37. Jesus said, I know that ye are Abraham's seed. He's speaking to Pharisees who want to kill him. Okay? Uh, notice he says, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Who did Jesus say his father was? Who did Jesus say his father was? Who's he talking about? God the Father. The Pharisees who are physically descendants of Abraham, right? They're, they're Jews, right? He said to them, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. Well, who's their father? We're going to get there. Keep reading. Look at verse 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye'd do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. See, they, they believed he was the descendant of Mary and a Roman soldier. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would have loved me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil. Hold on. Am I saying that every person who's a physical descendant is of the devil? No, what I'm saying is these people who did not believe on Jesus Christ are of their father, the devil. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Look at verse uh, 45. Because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? Nobody, because he's sinless. And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Look at verse 48. Then answered the Jews, physical Jews, and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan, and hast a devil? Does your address make you the people of God? No. Does your DNA make you the people of God? No. I'm going to end with this three more minutes, and we'll pick this up next week. Number three, what about having the religion of Judaism? Does that make you one of the people of God? As I've already told you, and you can research this yourself if you'd like, the Talmud, which is given as much authority, actually it's given more authority than the Torah, which are the first five books of the Old Testament. The Talmud states very clearly that Jesus was the son of Mary and a Roman soldier, that he went to Egypt to learn magic tricks, and that's how he did his miracles. By the way, I find it interesting, his enemies never said he didn't do miracles. They saw his miracles. They just said he did it through magic. Through the devil is what they said. They call him a blasphemer and an idolater, and they say he's in hell burning in hot excrement. People say, well, they believe the Torah. No, they don't. Look at John 5. They believe Moses' writings. They just don't believe the rest of our Bible. No, look at John 5, verse 46. Jesus said, for had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings... How shall you believe my words? So, okay, well, they don't, okay, they don't believe the Torah, but they worship the same God as we do. They just worship God the Father, not God the Son. No. Go to John 15. Look at John 15. Can I ask you a question? To the physical descendants, did they hate Jesus Christ? Did they? Did they? I'm not saying we shouldn't love them and want them safe. It's not what I'm asking. I'm asking, did they hate Jesus Christ? They did. They offered him up to be crucified. People say, that's not true. The Bible says it's true. In the book of Acts, it says, ye delivered him up. Now look at John 15, verse 23. He that hateth me 
Read the next four words. Hateth my father also. Say, so they love God, they just don't love Jesus. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you hate him, you hate his father. Verse 24, if I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Look at 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, and I have to end. This is such an important topic, especially right now, because there's so much falsehood out there. So much false preaching, so much false teaching. Don't walk away from here saying I'm an anti-Semite. Walk away from here saying I want every person saved, including the Jews, including the Palestinians, including the North Koreans and the South Koreans and the Chinese and the Japanese. I want them all saved. So did Jesus, by the way. He died for the sins of the whole world. Now look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Who is a liar? Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. Does Judaism deny that Jesus is the Christ? They do. As a matter of fact, they're still looking for a Christ. And do you know who is going to show up and they're going to follow him? Those who have not believed on Jesus Christ. Someone is going to show up and the Jewish religion, the people who adhere to it, are going to follow him along with the rest of the world. Who is it? The Antichrist. See, a lot of times people think anti means against. It actually means in place of. It, it, it means he's going to be a phony, and they're going to think this is Christ. They're not going to come going, we hate Jesus. He's, he was the Christ, but we hate him. No, this guy is going to show up, and they're going to go, he is the Christ. That's what they're looking for. Uh, look at 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, that's Jesus, the same hath not the Father. Well, they worship the Father, not Jesus. No, they don't. It's a different God they're worshiping. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. I need to spend much more time on this. Does the Bible say anything about Jerusalem in the end times? It does. We'll look at it next week. I have to end, but who are the people of God? People of God are the saved, believers from every physical nation. And I, and I could stand here for another hour, don't worry. Take a deep breath, it'll be all right. Uh, I could stand here for another hour and prove that to you. And I'm open to questions. Say, this is totally different from what I've heard. I don't think you're preaching the truth. That's fine. Go dig into the Bible. See if these things are so. I'm happy. I'm happy. Sit down with you with a Bible. Not a prophecy book. Got too many of those already. A Bible. And let's see if these things are so. What I'm telling you, folks, is living at a certain address doesn't make you the people of God. Having a certain DNA does not make you the people of God. Following a false religion does not make you the people of God. What makes anybody from any nation the people of God is believing on the cornerstone, the Lord Jesus Christ. When they asked the apostles, you know, that they, they, they were um, persecuting them and arresting them because they were standing for Jesus. They were bold in their preaching. And they said, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's the name of Jesus. And if you're here today and you're not saved, I'm going to tell you right now, you can be the people of God today. You can be forgiven today. You can be washed clean and made whole and given a home in heaven today by calling on the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Savior for the world. Let's bow our heads together, please. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Who would say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. I know my sins are forgiven. I know I have a home in heaven. I know I am the people of God one of the people of God, because I've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, and I want to praise Him and thank Him. If that's you, would you lift your hand? I know I'm saved. I know I am. I know I am. Praise the Lord. Heads are still bowed. Eyes are still closed. If you're not saved, maybe you couldn't raise your hand. I want to tell you, Jesus Christ, God's Son, loves you. He left heaven and came to this earth to die in your place on an old rugged cross. He was buried. He rose again to pay the full price for your sins, and He wants to save you. He wants to forgive you. He's the only way of, to heaven. He's the only way to God the Father. 
Our heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Who would say, Pastor, that's me. I'm not sure I'm saved. I need to be. If that's you, lift your hand. I'm not sure I'm saved. Lift it up. Anybody at all. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, child of God, do you realize you are that peculiar people? You are that holy nation. You are the child of God, the children of God, the Israel of God, the elect. You know what, you know what our job is to do? It's to shine and be a light in this world, to bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ so that all the earth can know who he is and who God the Father is. That, that's our job. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, who would say, Lord, thank you for saving me, and Lord, help me to stand for you this week. Help me to be a light in the darkness and point others to you this week. If that's you, lift your hand. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Bless it to our hearts now. And uh, Lord, I just pray that we'll go our way rejoicing that we're the people of God. And Lord, being a witness, finding others who don't know, don't know Christ and introducing them to him. Help us this week. We love you in Jesus' name. Let's